Right, so Grand Film Black History Walks, so we organise walks, talks and films on the African of, African of London every single month or you so Every month of the year there's something that's happening. It might be a walk, a get a walk, or a talk like this one here, or a film in a random venues. Now if I show you this slide here, you might recognise, in fact just have a look at the dates there. See how many of those laws you're familiar with. Because for each of those laws, groups of people had to lobby, protest, organize, and demonstrate to fight for equal rights. All those laws did not come by themselves. The people in power did not say, okay, you can have equality, be it for your gender or your race. All those laws you see there had to be fought for. So many of you think that slavery equals black history, or black history begins with slavery. So before I go any further, I've got to talk about the ancient civilizations in North, East, West, and South Africa. And in this short video, it's about five minutes long, you can hear a voice, or you're gonna hear the voice of Moira Stewart. Moira Stewart was one of the first black female news readers on TV. In fact, that was a big deal back in the 70s, to have a black woman read the news was, was, was a big deal. So even she herself is part of the story. This picture is was produced in London about 500 years ago. Can you spot the black man? Where is he? He's right there, okay, fine. And as you can see, if we look at him, how is he dressed? Is he half naked? Is he in chains? Is he on his knees? What's he doing? He's playing a trumpet. This is a skilled musician. And here, this then represents the fact that you have that African or black population in London 500 years ago, long before the wind rush of 948. Because again, in schools, Children only talk about Windows 94, yeah. And for many people, black and white, they believe that's when black, black people actually arrived here. That's not true. But they were here at least 500 years ago, that could be quite easily. Now let's look at a, a piece of physical history here. So if you come out of the tube station and you go down, you go down here, there's some kind of alleyway. Who's actually walked down that place before? It's a shortcut, so you must have been there before. Right? As you walk down here, did you not notice there's something on the walls here? Yes or no? No? Alright, fine, that's all Because if you walk down that, that alleyway there, on the side of the church, you'll just see something. Like that. Yes or no? Don't tell me no because it's there. So if you go there tomorrow, you're going to see it. So don't tell me no because it's right there. And if you read it, it will tell you this. Many famous preachers came here. The evangelist George Whitfield was here twice in 29. In the same year, John Wesley preached on coming to an estimated 50 plus people. Fifty years later, for the first black preachers, the radical what? Born to a South African slave woman, in Jamaica spoke on this side. So that's what he used to preach. Apart from preaching in Soho against the evils of slavery, he went to that place right there, let me go back a bit, and spoke against slavery. So there's a fight for equal rights, there's a fight for humanity, there's a fight taking place in your backyard, which you passed before. And that's the point. This is why we put the walks on because there's history like this all over London going back 200 years, 500 years, or 3,500 years. But there's not always a big old sign there to tell you what, what it's all about. But even when there is a big old sign, sometimes you don't see it. For some reason, it's like it's right there, but you don't see it. And this is history, how the history is. It's sometimes in your face, unless someone comes out to you, you might miss it. There are plenty of so called bad men in the Caribbean because here's another part of history that's not well covered. In schools, they often teach young people from 6 to 16 about slavery. But having done these walks for what, like ten, almost 10 years now, I always ask the kids come the walks, when you talk about slavery at school, are you ever taught about the people who fought back? This guy here is uh, Mr. Carlos. He's becoming more and more well known. He's got a really interesting um, piece on the business business of slavery and the legacy of slavery as well. Three minutes now, he does a good job. Everyday racism, what should we do? Racism is a business. For centuries it has underpinned global economic exploitation. And like <coughs> any successful business idea, it needs great marketing, PR and advertising to ensure lasting success. And that marketing affects everyone. Let me give you an example. I remember a few years ago, after having just finished the tour, I was paying in some cash at the bank. We'd done quite well on merchandising. Next to me at the counter, another young Afro-Caribbean male, similarly dressed, was also paying in quite a large sum of money. Surprisingly, my first thought was one of suspicion. Hmm. I wonder what he does for a living. Yes, 
Even though I know that working class young black men do not control the multi-billion dollar drug industry, the connection between people who look like me and drug dealing has been seared into my mind thanks to a lifetime of advertising campaigns like this. Millions of humans literally pouring bleach onto their skin to try and be white, normalized insanity. Of course, this internalization is how effective advertising works. Major brands become etched into your psyche, and the system that sells racism is doing a fantastic job. For example, <coughs> I've visited countless schools and again and again and again seen children of African origin get embarrassed when saying their own foreign-sounding names, even at schools with predominantly black and Asian pupils. I'm yet to see a child called Tim or Paul laugh in shame as they introduce themselves. Yet racism seems to be one of the only problems that some people, conveniently, believe that we can solve without first analysing its cause and then plotting its destruction as any concerned doctor would with any other disease. We cannot let ourselves be bullied into being silenced for fear of playing the race card. And whilst we must not conflate every act of prejudice with structural white supremacy, we must recognise the relationship between top-down propaganda and the bias that we carry. Fighting prejudice, both in society and within ourselves, is a key part of the search for justice. Now this event is brought to you in association with Kai Lutrop and the African Caribbean Students Union. <coughs> the people presenting it are from Black is Yours. We have a website, this page, YouTube channel and Twitter and we have the mail that goes there every three weeks telling you what is happening because you do this sort of thing every single month, all year long, for the last eight years. Films, talks, books, that's the website. Join them in if you want to. Happening. We've got to the 50s, hopefully we can get to the 80s, if not the 90s and 2000s, because there's more, loads more to come. But now we're going to take a 10 minute break. So we're going to take a 10 minute break, 10 minute break, throw the break, come back, 10 minutes, thank you. Hi, good evening everyone. My name is Kai and um, I'm the LCC officer and I'm the one that sort of um, collaborated to put this event on this evening. Um, just first of all, thank you for being here. Part of the campaign that I'm running is to make our events a bit more diverse and also take black history out of it just being in October. So this is a, hopefully an ongoing thing that we're going to be doing um, throughout collaborating with Black History Walks. So I've been to, I can pretty much go to every single uh, Black History Walk event. Um, they're just so needed for actually everyone to be more educated. Um, across the board, regardless of creed and colour. Um, so it's, um, yeah, it's really great just to be able to really kind of inform yourself um, about you know, what's going on. Okay, so my thoughts on the events are that like, it's very good, it's very useful information that is very not shared. Obviously we know a lot about the American experience, but it's good to know about the Black British experience as well, so that people can relate to that and it's knowledge that you can pass on to other people as well.